Hello. So I was making um, um, yeah, the same panels as I made for Chris from Part Logic. So this sounds so. Uh, I was gonna uh, hire the magnets, not the same magnets as uh, I used for his panels, just because I still have some long magnets left. And I want to keep the ones. If he wants another one, I can supply this exact same one. So these are very long magnets that I had. Uh, but they're really expensive. But uh, otherwise they're just lying around here. So, but what we're gonna check is make sure that this north-south thing is consistent. There are multiple ways of doing this. You know, just mark one side and do it all the same every time. That's one. But uh, I bought one of these meters some time ago. Like a Chinese magnetic field meter thingy. It probably has a name, but I forgot what the name was. It's one of those, uh, well, yeah, cheap. I guess you can say cheap. I mean, I don't know what a professional one costs, but probably a lot more than this one does. Now, so this is probably not going to be accurate. People always ask me, yeah, but that's not accurate, for instance. And I don't care. Because for me, I want to know, for instance, the polarity. I'm pretty sure it, it gets that right. That's one thing. Um, as well as the way I made the CBT ribbon, I use this one and the milli... Tesla it showed might not be correct but that's not the problem as long as I measure with the same meter I can still adjust my magnetic array to let's say half half the magnetic fields to uh, reduce the output by 6 dB so it uses one of those connectors it reminds me of my CB time the 27 megahertz radio frequency they used it for the mic connector although this is a five pin and they used a four pin <clears throat> so it looks like a pencil but it's actually the thing that measures it is this tiny pcb with a reed thingy i guess or what i don't know what it's called the thing that um picks up the magnetic field now i do have to make sure i don't know what is the front side or the back side to be fair i could look it up or as i said if i do it the same all the time it doesn't really matter for me oh i lost the manual well anyhow bloop there it is and uh yeah, so for instance, this magnet here, I'll put it over here. It says uh, south and the amount of millitesla. Well, I'm pretty sure this should might be much higher, so I'm not sure if that's correct. But here it says south. If I switch this, it probably will say north, you know. So you have to use it consistently. Um, so if you, yeah, you can see here, here it's south. If I moved a little bit downwards, it's uh, north. It's the side of the magnet. So this is north, the other side is south, and they come together and there's a moment where it switches from one to the other. But let's say this is south. Maybe I want to start with north. I don't know. I should use the uh, left left hand rule. I always forget. Well, as long as I do it consistently, it doesn't really matter. Uh, what's the options on this? I have no clue. Well, hold speaks for itself. 
it will hold the highest value, which is interesting. Uh, null. I don't know. Ah. It changes 200 millitesla or 2000. Uh, different methods of measuring. I don't know what kind of thing this is. I'll keep it at mini Tesla. This is an unknown button. Ah, it's the backlight apparently. Is that useful? Don't need it. Uh, so yeah, a simple thing and I bought it because it's, well, as I said, it's interesting to see what a magnetic field does. And if the reading is correct, I don't really care much about the reading being correct. Of course, it would be nice, but if it's not, it's still useful for me. <clears throat> so now if I dump it in here, this magnet, the next panel I know I'll start with, for instance, north facing me. So both panels will be the same. I can determine after I did the whole panel which connection of the coil will be plus and or minus and just, you know, I only have to check that once and then after I know which connection would be plus or minus. I could like calculate or, you know, figure out which one is plus and which one will be minus even when, uh, when it's not built. But this is the easy way. Otherwise, I have to fuck around with the left hand rule or right hand rule. It is, I believe, the left hand rule. And I made a video about it using the right one, which is wrong, but still illustrates what happens. But plus and minus will be reversed. I think it was something like this. I made a mistake there. Uh, but for me, at the moment, at that time, it was only interesting to see which direction the membrane would move. Uh, I didn't take into account which one will be positive or negative. I ignored that part completely. So that's why I could use the right hand rule or my right hand instead of actually needing the left hand to do it correctly. I believe it, it has been a while. So. But yeah, so um, I'll use this thing. And the reason why it looks like a pen is because this is really fragile, thin PCB. And if you break off the PCB, the measurement equipment is not useful anymore. You can buy separate probes. I mean, now uh, the thing that picks it up is sitting flat. So I can measure like this or this. And I believe there is one that is facing this direction. So you can measure like this. Um, where did I left the cap? Because... I am probably going to destroy it if I leave it somewhere without the cap on it. Hello. Where are you? Well, I'm going to look for the cap. And maybe I'm going to glue in some magnets. I made a template, as you can see. <clears throat> it is uh, HDPE. Um, cyan acrylate glue, which I use at this moment, does not... Well, it can stick on this material, but not very good. So you should be able to get it off. And uh, you see some shimmering maybe here. I waxed it, so it's a bit fatty. I waxed it with mirror glaze, which is used for uh, demolding a part. So it's like a, um, yeah, you coat the thing, your mold. Mold? Yeah, you, you coat your mold with the mirror glaze, so epoxy and whatever is not going to adhere to it. So I added that here and I hoped it would like kind of dry out, but it doesn't. But anyhow, it makes it more fatty. So uh, less likely that I'll glue in this forever. Uh, now I use cyan acrylate from Mitre something. Mitre fast from ever built. I think it's uh, American. Um, but I should look around for people that make shoes and such. There are more rubberized versions of cyan acrylate. So a little bit thicker and they're more like a combination of the cyan acrylate becomes really hard and like brittle. And they, there's some additive in there that makes it a little bit more flexible. And I would like to have um, a huge canister of that because it's 
I think it's better if it's not that brittle uh, and thick as well. Uh, so cyanacrylate you can get in a very different uh, viscosities. There's like the really thin stuff that creeps under everything, which can be nice for some things, not so nice for this. If I would add this, this here, um, there would be hardly anything on the metal itself to grab on the magnet. So you want some th thicker variant of it. And since brittle materials, if you drop it, the magnets will come off probably. So a rubber variant would be a bit nicer. It has a bit more shock resistance. But uh, I didn't look around for it. I know it it exists, but probably I will end up in the leather manufacturing side or shoe repair thingy. So yeah, I have to glue in all these magnets, uh, but I'm not sure if I do it right now because I don't really feel like it. Um, yeah, I attach the metal as well with the uh, cyan acrylate glue. As you can hear, it is. Oh. It is solid. This thing sounds like metal now. No rattling. But it's uh, HDPE and some metal. Maybe if, you know, if I'm gonna make these panels far more often, I'll maybe let laser cut a piece of metal that fits it. So it's less work, more expensive, but you can also line up the holes better to screw these panels down. Now it's a bit a bit janky, but it will do. I still did not find my cover for the probe. I didn't hear it drop, so it should be here somewhere. Did I put it? Ah, I probably did it. Put it in the packaging, yes. So never you know, I was too clean. Now I lost it. Should just have thrown thrown it out here. But anyhow, that's the um, TD8620. I believe it's like 100 euros or 110. Probably not accurate. But who cares? It's uh, because I do so much with magnets. I th I thought after eight years, I maybe should get some one of those just to have a slight idea of what I'm doing. <coughs> Besides using fan, of course. Yeah, uh, the tweeter magnets are arranged differently. I use a piece of metal and this is wa waxed paper. Uh, it will be uh, sitting there. Oh, I should have started with that one actually, when I think of it. Hmm, that's annoying. Hmm. Okay, I might need to cut a piece of metal, this metal, that will fit in between these pieces of metal. Because I wanted to say, I put it like this, attach the magnets, glue them down. That's all fun and giggles, but now this metal is in between it, so the magnets will be one millimeter deeper than they should be. So that's good, I noticed this right now. <clears throat> so next time, first do the tweeter magnets, then glue this part on. Or make a new jig. Like I said, cut this piece so it will fit in here. And then uh, just use it. But better is to do the magnets of the tweeter first. Hmm. Okay, I'm definitely gonna do this, uh, this tomorrow and not today. It's late. End of the day. I've done enough. See ya.